Join our psychedelic smoke sesh as we explore exciting new dimensions of existence, thought, and possibility. We'll take you out of this world and blaze through infinite realms while occasionally forgetting what we were saying. (laughs) (laughs) This This is is Higher higher consciousness. Consciousness. Season 5, Episode 4, All About Romantic Relationships. Oh, boy. Always about the singing. It's going to be sexy today. (laughs) You keep saying it's going to be sexy. Well, What does that even mean? Just saying. What does that mean? What are we doing? I mean, what are we doing on camera? Do we have a a sex uh, episode this season? I don't believe so. I don't think so. Well, it'll be baked into this one. Yeah. Mm, Romantic Mm. relationships slash intimate relationships. Mm. Yes, I'm very excited. <laughs> Just kind of threw that out there. <laughs> well, I'm sure that will come up in today's uh, topic since it is all yeah. about romantic relationships and sex yeah. is a big part of it. So that is true. Before we get into all of that, shout out to Better Butter Brothers for butter, butter, butter. supplying us. <laughs> it's like I feel like you're at a baseball game, like trying to get like you know cotton candy or something. Butter, butter, butter. Oh, yeah. And they're just like shining across like whatever they have. <laughs> so we have Better Butter Brothers and we have Sherb Cake today. And we're using my lovely bong, which I'm making another version of it on our Make and Bakes, which are every Thursday, I'm sorry, every Friday oh, at 12 p.m. Eastern so Standard Time things. on Insta. Uh, fall. And then Wake and Bakes are on Thursdays. But we can maybe make some room for like a Jake at and 12 Bake. 12 p.m. I'm getting that Jake and Bake. And we'll do a make right and bake, right and we're going to do, uh, what else uh, we do? So, make and bake. Rake and bake. That's rake coming and, oh, up. Oh, that was the, yeah, rake and bake. Oh, got to get some more leaves, leaves outside so I can rake, <laughs> but we'll do a rake and bake, I swear. Okay. I'm doing it. Oh, let's do it. That'll actually be really funny. It's going to be so ridiculous. <laughs> It's going to be like a stationary camera, just Dave raking while I'm passing the joint back and forth. Oh my uh, god. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the space with my Mary Jane bundle, which you can totally get and pre-order on my Indiegogo at igg.me slash at slash let's dash take dash a dash trip. It's really thorough hard. Link. It's really hard to say it's a in person. Thorough it's link, so yeah. much easier to type. <laughs> well, you could say like, do you have it uh, like a link to it pinned on any of your social? Yeah. So if you just go to a meaningfuldream.com, you can just find it through the banner there. Yeah. It's the very first banner. You can click on that, just and you can also it. get a direct link easier. to our podcast along with our YouTube channel. If you are listening on our podcast thank you so much if you're watching us on youtube also thank you so much thank you thank you you're so awesome i we are i was gonna say i was talking to the audience not to you but i mean you're awesome too that's why i said that's why i corrected myself because i realized you weren't talking about me but i am awesome too so are you though you're also awesome 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 yeah awesome everyone's awesome awesome okay let's make it more awesome you know how i feel about that voice i know (laughs) oh it's just it's so much fun oh it's like kermit's like older brother or something like that kermit's older brother like herschel (laughs) kermit and herschel that's what herschel sounds like (laughs) <laughs> okay 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 we gotta focus okay so let's clear this space and open up this space we ask that our ancestors and spirit guides be with us today during this conversation may what needs to be communicated come through clearly and concisely thank you for releasing any stress any anxiety any <clears throat> worries or doubts or fears and thank you for helping us be more present in the moment and embracing these newer endeavors amazing 
All right, now that we're done that, we're gonna go ahead and do the blessing. So let's take a deep breath, bring out your Mary Jane. Get your Mary Jane out, yo. Yes, get ready. Take a deep breath. One more time. <laughs> ready? <clears throat> Bless you, Mary Jane, and thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for your love and your abundance, and may you hear our intentions, and may this episode help open up the hearts and the minds and the perspectives of those who are listening and or watching. May we dive deep into romantic relationships and bring to the surface something that is unique and unheard of. May we have a great time, may we have fun, and may these blessings cross over to all of our listeners and watchers too. Thank you. And so dope it be. So dope it be. Yay! <laughs> I gotta meditate with this light as it's like strobing through Ooh, different colors. That would be very interesting yeah. for me to do. Because just now, man, just like with my eyes closed, it was like, ooh, monkey. Sorry. <laughs> I was, I was waiting for it. Not, like, I was like, I want to be nice and, and silent and so that we can make this it, as loud but... as possible. Yeah, whatever. I've been burping a lot lately. I've been needing to burp a lot lately. You're expelling your demons. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of yeah, demons. Yeah, oh, sleepy <laughs> demons are now coming out. <laughs> There's the burpy demons, the sleepy demons, the demon demons. The demon <laughs> demons. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I'm feeling a little loopy today. I don't know what it is, but I just feel a little. Well, it is a bit cloudy now. out today, kind of rainy ish. Yeah. It's gonna yeah. rain a lot more later. But mm -hmm. anyway. All right, anyway, so while I take a hit on this, why don't you start the topic of romantic relationships? Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> well, it's like so 2016. Or when did that? What was that popular? I don't even know when that. I don't popular. know. I don't care. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> romantic relationships. Um, it's I've, a fun to be in. Well, isn't it? It, it, yeah. Well, it's interesting because, like, the first thing I thought of when you think when I thought of romantic relationships was when you're a kid and you first sort of like understood the difference between like a romantic relationship and like any other kind of relationship right because you have like your more plutonic type relationships but then you have more of that intimate kind of you know relationship which i would say is more romantic but then they have there's that other la layer to it that i think comes into play a little later on in life when you get older and you start to become a little more actually <coughs> like romantic right right because there's a difference between like lusting after somebody and being romanced what by, yeah with somebody and by right. someone well yeah the first example that we really see of a romantic relationship is of our parents oftentimes right and that off that is a big part of our foundation of how we approach romantic relationships later on in life and also like what we're taught romantic relationships to be like so for me i know that i had my first boyfriend in preschool um, was that a romantic relationship? Boyfriend. Yeah. Was it, but <laughs> exactly. Was it a romantic relationship? Maybe right. not. But it was something that, you know, I like you and you like me. And that was like the basis of understanding. But I like you more mm. than like a friend. Like mm. I like you like you. Or I really, mm. really like you like you. You remember passing those notes? Oh, where it yeah. said, do you like me? Check box yes or no. I mean, I or had maybe. A... I always threw in Maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> keep it ambiguous yeah I like to keep it ambiguous uh yeah I remember when I was a, a, a kid uh my first like crush I uh I was in kindergarten and she was actually my best friend at the time it was like my my first friend that I had ever had uh but then you know we remained friends as we grew a little older and and I remember like really like thinking oh man like she she is very cute you know and i remember our, our <laughs> she is very cute i remember our moms like talking back and forth like oh would it be funny if they got married oh my goodness oh but then she moved away 
but and, it's interesting it's like know, even our parents at, even at that young age are almost like encouraging that behavior of like oh what if they get married yeah. and it's like it's just that it's like whole fantasy kind of fantasy. idea yeah it's like it's really weird if you kind of think about it in the long run, but it's also... What if our babies got together and had sex and had babies of their own? Oh, it's so weird. And it's like, but yet they have their whole lives yet to live. Like, and yeah. we already go into this planning of the future mode. So I think that just tells us how important it is to our human nature to crave and to want love even from a really young age even if we don't fully understand the dynamics of what a romantic relationship really is well then there's also the layer of like wanting or desiring like a fantastical kind of outcome you know for a relationship right because yeah. you were just saying like you know your your mom's can like talk back and forth about oh wouldn't it be cool if our two kids got to get well, you know, then there's also, I think, like, what happens when, you know, you have different people as you get older, you know, different people in, like, friend groups and, like, different, you know, people that you associate with that, you know, you're in relationships and then you're not in relationships and then you, you know, like, bounce back and forth and it's like, well, what is this all about? So, like, romantic relationships can get, like, very complicated as, as things progress and you get a little bit more adult and like the emotions get a little bit more serious. Well, yeah, they get yeah. more serious, they get deeper, they get yeah. um, heavier sometimes or they get grander depending on the, the situation and the relationship that you are experiencing. And the type of person you're with too. Yeah. You know, because right. like and that's certain the people you can... are in that moment as well. Yeah, that's an interesting uh, idea, too. I was thinking about that uh, not too long ago. The fact that, like, you know, when I was a younger person, I used to be a lot more timid and kind of... Um, I would never kind of, like, speak my truth in relationships. I would always just sort of, like, kowtow to the other person because I, I was afraid of them leaving me, you know? So, like, I was just petrified of that. So I wouldn't say anything that was construed as, like... Oh, well, I disagree with that. You know what I mean? So I kind of almost became the other person, like a carbon copy of like what the other person wanted, which mm -hmm. was not good. Not good. Yeah, you could you you can lose yourself in romantic relationships if you're not careful, which is why in our previous episodes, if you haven't listened, we talk about the importance and the need for self love needing to be there first before even really being able to have a fulfilling romantic relationship. That doesn't mean that you have to like there that doesn't mean that you will have days where you won't be very happy <coughs> with yourself but you have to have this love for yourself in order to understand that you are worthy of receiving the best and only the best right um so yeah it's it's interesting how how so, from such a young age it can really change the way we behave in the present and even in the future yeah. depending on how closely connected you are to your inner child i think how much healing you've done around it along with like what you did grow up around with like some people had great relationships to to look after when it comes to romantic relationships and some didn't or some had like the placebo yeah, effect that's true. um so I know for me, like I grew up in a home where I lived with a single mom and I would often go and visit my dad. So my parents were never really together. So the only time I ever saw that kind of like a romantic relationship within a parental role is within other family members um, or friends' families. Mm -hmm. um, but that was really about, about it. So I feel like that contributed a lot to some of my own relationship thing uh problems and issues that i had growing up um and i learned the hard way and i was somebody that i think it was interesting because there was a time that i really remember in high school that i knew who i was going to be dating right before i was even done like right before it, the other person broke up with me and like everyone had broken up with me up until like the last two people before you and i feel like i was in a place and time where it it was serious to me, but I don't think it was nearly as serious as, like, I thought. It, mm -hmm. it just, like, was more of a... Because, again, like, I always knew, like, oh, I'm going to be with this person afterwards. Or this person's going to, like, 
come through um somehow and we're gonna date this and i don't know it we're was, gonna date this yeah we're gonna date this like, is gonna this be time. the date like and like so it was weird but i never shared that with people because no one would ever believe me so why would i even sh uh, share that at the, at the time um but it was a time too where i did feel that, that heartbreak every time you know someone broke up with me but i was never really like deeply sad and upset about them and some I was able to remain friends with even to this day which is great and that's also yeah. I think rare um so I really don't feel like I really started to truly understand what a real romantic relationship really was like until I got to college mm -hmm. um but even then I fumbled I don't feel like <laughs> I feel like I didn't really get to experience a real proper romantic relationship until I met you honestly because up until then, I feel like it was about me unconditioning and unlearning and um, relearning what it is that I want and how I should or shouldn't be treated, what I'm willing to uh, commit to, what are things that I cannot, you know, go with. And um, there were a lot of things, like, like you said, like you felt like you became carbon copies. There's a lot of things that I think I did and became and um would even do oh, or say look. because of the people i was with like i lost myself no it's 100 percent real uh, that's exactly what happens i think to a lot of us is we're too afraid of losing that other person so, so we, we repress we, ourselves yeah we do things to you know be more in alignment with the thing that they're wanting or the thing that you're, you think is going to make them happy and not yourself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so yeah i agree you know i i think that everybody should do themselves a favor and spend a lot more time by themselves first before they jump into a serious romantic relationship um, and even when you're in a romantic relationship to make sure that you spend time with yourself yeah yeah and continue because that's that's the important thing is like developing a relationship with yourself so that when you get into a romantic relationship, you are looking for what you want in another person. You're not trying to make that other person somebody that you want them to be. And you can allow that person to be who they are and continue to be who they are, just the same as you would expect them to want you to be you and continue to be who, who you are. So in my mind, if you don't know yourself first, if you don't understand what you want, how could you understand what you want in another person? And how can you truly want what's best for them at the same time as they wanting what's best for you? Mm -hmm. You know, like if you get into a relationship, not knowing yourself, not really knowing what you like, what you don't like, um, who you are, what it's like to be just by yourself and to be responsible for your own love and fun. Um, and you know, with all due respect, entertainment, you know, even though entertainment sometimes can be distractionary. Um, yeah, depending on how you use how it. How you use it, exactly. So, um, but when it comes to being in a relationship, you know, there are a lot of things about being in a relationship that are very, very different than being by yourself and being single. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I was single for, gosh, a long time, many, many years. Um, and I, you know, had small relationships here or there, uh, maybe a month or two or three, sometimes a year or two. Um, but all, all of them ended in the same way is, you know, the other person was either emotionally unavailable or wildly depressed and just repressing, you know, all of those emotions and sort of grasping onto other people. Mm -hmm. um, thinking that that other person is going to make me happy. And mm -hmm. it was yeah. a similar thing that I was doing, um, except for I thought that I had grown, you know, over the years, I was growing to love myself more. Mm -hmm. So when those mm -hmm. relationships ended, it wasn't as big of a deal to me as it maybe once had been, you mm -hmm. know? Like the last <laughs> relationship I was in was one of the longest prior to meeting you. Uh, it was almost two years and um after that ended yeah sure i was broken up for a few days but after those few days i just i let it go you know like i was just done i was over it you know i quite literally 
was just like, you know what, this is what I want now, you know, and I refocused my intention and mm -hmm. what I wanted to manifest. And I met you two months later. Yep. So, you know, I, I think a lot of, a lot of what we do in relationships is in, in the beginning, at least when we don't know ourselves uh, and, and we're kind of just trying to find this love outwardly through someone else. Um, we, we are doing ourselves a disfavor or a, a disservice, mm -hmm. you know, because in that moment, you know, we could decide to do something for ourselves, um, or we could just say, well, I'm just going to do what this other person wants, you know, because I have too much fear that they're going to leave me. And if you do that enough, it's just going to, you're going to lose yourself. You're just going to yeah. like, where are you? Who are you? What do you want? Where are your intentions? You know, where, what is what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So that was a bit of a rambling message, but you know, I ultimately, I think what I was getting at was, I, I think everybody should spend a good amount of time by themselves first, getting to know themselves first. That's why we talked about self-love first. Yeah. Um, so that I'm when you- to do this in this specific Yeah, so order. that when you get into <laughs> a romantic relationship, you mm -hmm. know, you have a better, uh, foundation on which to build from yeah if that makes sense yes yeah because knowing thyself you know you're able mm -hmm. to know thyself. yeah seriously know thyself and by knowing thyself you know all mm -hmm. um you don't know all like in every single little detail and thing you're still learning but by you being able to accept yourself it's so much easier to accept other people and to not hold judgment and um, to really truly be open and be like you said clear and focused about what it is that you are searching for and wanting in the romantic relationship Well, a lot of what we uh, a lot of our anxieties are based off of our own judgments of ourselves that we project onto our onto other people mm -hmm. that then we create this false narrative or false character of these people in our lives in our minds and that then is the the um, the vehicle to deliver those messages, you know. So like yeah. when you feel um, anxiety, maybe about the way that you look, it's maybe not you telling yourself that you don't look good. It's maybe your you know grandma or your aunt or your mom or whatever you know just like mm -hmm. in your head the voice like saying to you know oh are you sure you want to wear that honey you yeah. know something like that yeah or like you know in a situation where you know you're judging yourself for i don't know whatever you know it could just be it anything it could be anything um but it, it often comes through as another person's voice you yeah. know or through if someone you really other person's listen. voice like yeah. if you, sometimes like we may not be able to determine that because if we've heard it over and over and over and over again throughout our years, it gets reinforced and that voice gets disguised to be in our own voice when in reality it is somebody else's voice that it derived and come from. Um, sometimes it could even be Sometimes through it is somebody. just your own yeah. voice too. Like your own projection <laughs> of what you think someone is going to be judging you for, but in but actuality, they, they not, don't judge you for that. Yeah, you know? they're not even thinking about that. You know, I've had lots of financial fear when it comes to, you know, my, my dad, you know, because I've asked him for money a couple times over my life. And so when it, when it comes to certain financial things... <laughs> Sorry. Ooh, I was you. trying to be like... Um, I... Oh you. my! Burping, sneezing, all like all the all demons the are coming out. Yeah. <laughs> my goodness, uh, man! I have a lot of fear when it comes to that kind of stuff, and and oftentimes in the past it was veiled under or through my dad's voice, but then talking with him more, it's it, it's a different story. You mm -hmm. know, he has a different mm -hmm. perspective in certain regards. You yeah. know, sometimes so it's um it's interesting how we can project our own neuroses and our own fears and anxieties onto other people that then are playing a part in our own heads and they aren't even like who they really truly are you know i can't even imagine like how many relationships would be healed dramatically if people were to just be like hey do you really think about this about me you know and just whatever it may be mm -hmm. like do you think that I'm a fuck up or do you think that I'm fat or do you think, you know, but I mean, and like, like really at the end of the day, it. it really doesn't like matter what they say though, because at the end of the day, we need to like, 
we can understand. True, like, true, true, I don't true. feel like it matters, like, what people have to say about right. their judgments or but their But, like, the about healing them. that would come through that, you know, just the realization that this person really doesn't harbor any ill will or judgment. Yeah, against, yeah, like, getting you know? clear about the intentions. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. Um, so, <clears throat> I want to talk about what... Um, what kind of things come up in a romantic relationship and I would also like to kind of discuss like ways and share ways to help maintain a healthy romantic relationship as well so like what what creates a, like what makes a romantic mm. relationship different than any kind of relationship uh, which I know we've tapped into like a little bit how can we have a good well I think it starts with kissing um, <laughs> <laughs> um is it though no <laughs> there's just like the first childlike thought that i it have it starts with kissing yeah like and if you were to ask a kid that, that question she has cooties and you're gonna get them and it's okay you can't escape the cooties because you can take a shower because <laughs> you can take a shower it'll be fine Oh my god, I was like watching Homer, or watching um, The Simpsons, and Bart was like, I'm surprised Lisa doesn't have as many, co like, for as having many cooties as, like, she does, she's actually a cool person. Oh, <laughs> she's yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That is such, like, a child, like, cool. mind. That's what we thought back in the day. Um, <clears throat> so, obviously, one thing that makes a romantic relationship different than a platonic one is that there is a elevated feeling of... Um, love and sensuality of intimacy attraction of, um attraction chemistry just um like a deep magnetic animal urges yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yes um so it, it can uh be all of those different expressions of that love so this kind of love is you know something where will be maybe more physical touching one another in areas mm. that, you know, you where we wouldn't that. totally like <laughs> touch. Um, because it's a level of, a level a different level of passion and intimacy. And like we said, like from the early on we're we're searching for it. So yeah, sex is a big part of a romantic relationship. Is it the only part of it? No. No. But is it a big part of it? Fuck yeah. There's it is. sort of like that it's to me there's a, almost like this interesting in between where so like in a romantic relationship what you're just talking about like the idea of like touching one another being more close to one another you know kissing you know just being near one another but that know. doesn't necessarily mean you're doing that all the time everybody expresses it differently but yeah no i'm saying go ahead i'm just saying like you know things like that are sort of the intermediary between just like a regular <coughs> loving relationship with someone and full on like sex, you know, because mm -hmm. sex is very intimate, you know. Sex is very intimate. Um, yes. And I think people that are very connected um, to their emotions, sex can be even more intimate because mm -hmm. it can heighten those sort of energetic in. in yeah, because sex isn't meant right? just to be physical. It's meant to be an emotional right. experience. I mean, it can be but I mean, just a physical, but I think if you really want to take it to the next level, you need that emotion. Right, but then like you can have like a very deep, emotional, connective, re connected relationship with somebody and have it be pl completely plutonic. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I've had you know, relationships with my male friends that I've had moments where like we've hugged and embraced and I just know like this person loves me and I love this person, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is just as powerful as any other love that's out there, you know, romantic or not. Um, so it's, it's, there is this interesting sort of like interconnected play between like this deep, meaningful, loving connection and the physical expression of that right yes. yeah because i feel like the physical expression of it is much more <clears throat> connected to our um reproduction as a species mm -hmm. right versus the energetic expression is just what is well i would say it's also an expression of creation as well and joy as well right i mean i don't think it's just like purely well love is pervasive production right right so it's yeah <clears throat> so i feel i find and i think most people know this like when there is a 
in a romantic relationship, if there is no intimacy, most oftentimes the people aren't happy because that's what you go into a romantic relationship for is essentially to to have that higher level of intimacy. Get me higher up. So when that's not present, it can be really uh, disheartening and it may not feel like a really healthy relationship. But that sex isn't the only thing. Having good communication, being uh, unconditionally loving and supportive of one another, um, being willing to listen to one another, being willing to try new things that you may not like. That's the celebrating the other, the celebrating. other person. Yes. part right and yeah. not just being just yourself you know because yeah. that's the other part of it too is like you can be yourself you can have your own wants and needs and, mm -hmm. oof, and whatever um but i think part of being in a romantic relationship even being in a platonic relationship i think you have to recognize that that other person has the same mm -hmm. wants and needs and they may be very different than yours yeah so you know I think it's it's imperative upon all of us to at least give things um, a different, or at least give things space for you to review, integrate, and see if it fits. You know what I mean? Because, mm -hmm. you know, there might be something that they're into that you're not into, and you're just like, mm, I'm not sure I want to get down on that. And you're like, yeah, mm. and you can like, and that's okay. And you're like, you can have your own thing. You can do iguanas. I'm not an iguana guy. Just saying. It would be snakes if we did that. It would be snakes. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yes, anyway. Um, Ain't no snakes coming in this house. Mm. Girl. We're not having snakes in this house. Mm. We're not having... No, it's okay. I know. Yeah. I understand. You're going to wake up and that thing is going to have a kitty-shaped lump in it. If I a kitty shape lump in it, I hope not. If I had a snake, it would be something like in a magic shop kind of thing. Yeah, but I probably Keep it away from but I probably would just place. let the cats be a part of it before the snakes. I don't know if it's like the bat know. totem in me, but I'm just like, no snakes are no no go for me. Anyway, I'm just like you know snakes, bats, cats. All of the above. All of them. I Living love them things. all. I love all Except of for Mother mosquitoes. Earth. You know, tarantulas. I have a molten tarantula skin coming to me. How do we soon get on molten tarantula skin? Um, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> this is this is us celebrating each other. This no. is you celebrating my Giving my you space my to talk love about that your... yeah. Most most people don't really know that I do like the my yeah that i enjoy the oddities a the lot oddities. actually um it's like yeah i don't know it's i've always have as it's a kid. got like a squid in a jar and i do skulls it's a technical and bones and mm -hmm. dead decaying i things. have a, a skull right next to me you right do have now. like a very scary <laughs> skull it? i mean if you want to i don't think it's that scary uh, it's I mean, pretty demonic looking to me i don't think it's but... demonic i just think it's dirty <laughs> it needs to be cleaned yeah it just needs to be cleaned. That's what I think of when I look at that. <laughs> just It was once a deer. I found it at a garage sale. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> it was once a deer. It was once a live deer. I mean, it, it is was a deer once skull, a live deer. A, a deer skull. I found it at a garage sale. <laughs> it was top drop. It was $20. I was like, yeah, I'm going to definitely get this. $20? Yeah, for, for it. So, oh yeah, celebrating. God. And even if it's not something, like, I think it's also finding space within yourself to understand, like, you know that that is not your thing. And you know that that is something I really love. And while it might not be your thing, you still love me. And, like, you don't hold it against me that I no. like this thing that might I be weird to you and to you. other people. Yeah, I still go with you to the shops, and we see all the weird shit, and you're always like, oh, I'm going to buy this. And I'm like, crow's feet. Do you really need some crow's feet? I do have a crow foot. Okay. But the place that I get all anything get that of feet. that oddities, though, I will put a disclaimer. Any place that I buy any oddity things... It is always, 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 always ethically and sustainably harvested. I never, ever, 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 ever will purchase from somebody who poaches them for purely for Not sale. Not out of the back profit. of a van. No, most of these people are people hey. who get them from farms, and these are animals that naturally die, and then they harvest 
these animals and then they bring them in and they clean them up or their Native American reservation lands like you know there's a lot of different like and there's even just people who have like a rescue that receive these things like wolfers so I really always make sure that that is like an, an important thing but anyway yes going back into what we were talking about oh no like relationships <laughs> <laughs> I was like it's like out of nowhere you're just I like, was trying to get us back in. Ethical stuff and ethical things and, ooh, mm, sexy. <laughs> like, wow. From zero to yeah, 1,000 just... in two seconds. <laughs> That's how we do here on Higher Consciousness. Yeah. But, um, but no, so it's like I really honestly appreciate and love you for celebrating that part of me because that's been a part of me that I think I've kept hidden for a really long time because of fear of how it might seem or come out even when I was a kid I was um when my animals my pets like I had goldfish and newts and when they died before I like just threw them in the toilet or whatever I would dissect them Bye bye little baby well, I would dissect them because I was genuinely curious to know, like, what their insides looked like and to learn about the structure in the body. And, like, so I feel like there's always been, like, that that science-y, that curious part of me. And that's something I always, like, kind of kept hidden because it always came off as, like, weird and creepy and, like, dark. And it's, like, it's not really that at all, I mean, there's a little Frankenstein-y, but... You know. Well, you love the Frankenstein, and that's where, like, that... <laughs> well, that you're writing stories about <laughs> Frankenstein, Dave. So who's the one that's writing things about Frankenstein yet? <laughs> yes, anyway, so... Yeah, so I feel like that's really important. What else do you think is... Um, I feel like I took a lot of that there for a minute. I would like to that's okay. hear more from I had a you. joke in there, and it got, like, too long, and I was like, oh, shit, no, I can't tell it. It's like, like there's like a, a moment like in the conversation when you can tell a joke, but like if it drags on too long you and you get too far away, yeah, it's just like, no, you just can't. And it's so like lame when people try to like shove in jokes, you know, too late and you're just like, God, that's, I was like, no. that's way too late. Like, it's not, it's all about timing. Yeah, it's all like, about yeah, timing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so I was going to, I was going to come in and be like, Hey, 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 I got monkey. Because we were talking about, like, weird shit, oddities and stuff. Oh, my God. You want a monkey? I got a monkey. <laughs> Where'd so, you get that monkey? I'm, I'm not sure Sounds if he's so dead or alive, really. <laughs> what? A zombie monkey. There's a lot of zombie stuff coming up. I mean, obviously, it's Halloween time. <laughs> but uh, I feel like there's a lot of zombie content headed my way recently. I don't know why. Well, yeah, all the even like zombies. the Marvel zombies, there's like Marvel zombies, and they did zombies on a Doom Patrol show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then we, you know, just did the Everyone's showing the, the, the movie I worked on, the Night of an Animated I Dead. I think there's a theory that this COVID is going to start the zombie apocalypse, and maybe that's what people are just why people are interested. It's in funny it, because it's we, like we, looked into, we looked into we looked into but we're getting um, off topic. We're getting doesn't matter. This it is doesn't our show. Matter. We can talk about whatever the fuck we want to talk about. I'm just saying, real quick, before we move back on to our actual talk, the topic, oh, that we did research the 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 origins of the, 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 the origins of uh, zombieism. The, the, we the did. Term we zombieism. did. Yes, you should share it now that we're talking. It was about, about it. like it was a, from a Haitian voodoo. This is me celebrating you. When it you're was like Haitian zombie. voodoo, and it was about zombies. it was about the the idea that uh, it was all about slavery and that the slaves would oftentimes pray for death because mm -hmm. to them they could return to their mother africa their souls would return to mother africa and that they in their religion they had a similar thing in christianity where you know if you killed yourself that wouldn't happen but some slaves you know they were so downtrodden by you know their experience yeah, uh, obviously for, for so reasons. Uh, you know would kill themselves anyway and they were thought to uh their souls were thought to be trapped in their body there on that land you know as mm -hmm. a, a soul not living not dead yeah so it was almost like a zombie or they called it a zombie so and then from there it grew stuff. and then i think I'm not, we're not entirely sure what happened in between, but I think that was used as 
Well, it was like not entirely used as the interpreter, as the inspiration for the ghouls in Night of the Living Dead, the original George R. Romero uh, movie. Um, but I think I said his name right. I can't remember. I'm stoned. Um, but he used the term ghoul and then popular culture, like we as a, a fan base started attributing it as a zombie. I believe and there's other interpretations of where it comes from in other you know languages mm -hmm. that have similar words so i don't know maybe it's just like a collective consciousness thing where we as a collective decided this was a thing on multiple levels all over the planet at yeah, the same time yeah having different like uh, folklore but it wasn't I'd be very curious to know it wasn't no. traditionally like a pathogen <laughs> or a disease or something like that it was actually more of just this voodoo supernatural mm -hmm. you know spirit mm -hmm. soul death thing so yeah. that is one of dave's loves horror, horror in that way in that see way. i love horror stories and like the the psychological like psychological stuff i yeah, don't really you do. like you the, like the, the stuff where it, like it fucks with your brain yeah like i'm not like, a huge it, like blood and guts <laughs> and gore guy i mean if it serves the story if it serves the idea of, or the character then it, yeah, I'm all for it. It makes sense. But if it's just like blood and guts the whole time, I'm gonna just yeah. watch a movie it's for the blood like and dumb. guts. Like the like, Saw movies, essentially. I'm not all Those, about that. That's yeah, not about that. Not not cool. So anyway, I want to get back on to topic. So I love that we had a moment there where we just celebrated our love for some weird dark celebration. <laughs> so we said uh, having a good. You know, being able to listen to one another, being able to love unconditionally, being able to support one another, being able to have space um, away from other, um, being able to Just have sex with one another. Romance. Yeah. Actual think, romance. Of course, because this is romantic the lovey -dovey relationships. Stuff. So, yeah, yeah d tell us all about the romance. Baby. Well, I mean... There are people that aren't very romantic and don't get into all the lovey-dovey stuff. All of the... There's different ways to express romance. Yeah, well, it's like there's the intimacy stuff where you're just, you know, throughout the day, maybe you sneak a kiss or a hug or an intimate moment or something like that. Well, yeah, it's like and... that five languages of love. It's like learning what your partner like wants and yeah, learning how it. they receive love best so yeah. it's like words of affirmation or physical touch mm -hmm. gifts um you try to bite me sometimes lovingly like, and i'm like ah! Ah! you're ripping my flesh well, off my you, skin you lovingly bite me so i go to do it back and i guess i just bite you really can't, hard yeah, you can't <laughs> do it lovingly you do it like a I zombie do it see how the zombie worked its way back into the conversation wow, wow. I, I, I do see that i wore it in yeah yeah I'm like a magician so yeah like you said so it's like sneaking in like you know your partner might like a sneaking in of like a little kiss or your partner might rather like it when you come into the room and just like light, lightly like touch them on the shoulder and right. like give them a nice little massage or, or something or even if it's just like hey babe you look great you know like there's so many different ways girl all I gotta say. Yeah, I get that a All lot. I, gotta say. I get juicy. <laughs> <laughs> mm, juicy. Juicy and then followed by hands. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. All right. You have to go that far. I mean, that's true. It's what Just you say do. it. Right. It's true, Dave. I'm not mad about it. <laughs> I'm but, not mad uh, about it. No, I, well, then there's the other, there's the opposite side of the coin, though, where, you know, you do things that you think are romantic, but they may not necessarily be received as romantic. Like, you know, a lot of guys traditionally used to smack girls on the ass, which I, I can't uh, lie. That, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know if... But uh, it's not always welcome. That's really, if I would really consider that romantic. But, like, a guy might, is what I'm saying. Like, a yeah. guy might see that as, well, I, you know, I, I give her a little tap on the butt every once in a while, you know, that kind of thing. Romance is like when you, yeah, it's like, it's not like just a little tap on the butt. Romance is when you are actively trying to deepen your connection emotionally with your partner in some way, shape, or form. Just in case you didn't know. <laughs> so... <laughs> Which is why I think a lot of guys, like, they miss that because they don't, most guys 
I shouldn't say most guys. There are many guys that are just not connected to their emotions. I think there are many guys that are connected with their emotions, but they're too afraid to come out because it has been reinforced by um, either the masculine or the feminine side to not really be in touch with the your emotions. And I think there's a lot of guys that are actually extremely sensitive. Well, it's like there's the, well, well, I took you out to dinner or something like that. Well, it's like, well, yeah, well what, what like, about making dinner? You know, or like, yeah, what like about that's like more romantic, creating you an took experience the time and the at thought home, and the energy. You know? Yeah, exactly. Like, that would be a nice thing to do. That's four, 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 my God. I feel like that's like my new thing. Every time I see on the camera, it's my job to four, 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 like that, exactly. Just so excited. Oh numbers. My God. numbers! Numbers! I like numbers! <laughs> my God. Four, 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 four! <laughs> All right, Herschel. Herschel is back. Yeah, every single time. Oh, that's such a hate. I don't like that name. But yeah, Herschel, I did it on purpose because it would name. make you not want to do the terrible. voice more. No, I'm still going to do the uh, voice. I'm going to call you Herschel, <laughs> but I'm going to call you Herschel. I'll rename myself. Just give nope. me time. Yep, don't worry, it's and then eventually you'll catch on because I'll just repeat it so much that you'll just naturally. <laughs> See, you don't understand that that's my plan. So how can you combat my plan with my plan? It doesn't make sense. Mm, are you sure though? Yeah, it really doesn't make sense. I it always makes sense. No, right? no, yeah, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. So silly. <laughs> So I think silly. laughter and being able is like a part of romance, like being it able almost to... got in the way of our romance the first time. <laughs> Yeah, you should share that story with No, people. how about you share that story? No, I think you should. Because you I have can't to take stop a drink. laughing. The first time I, I went to go... To hear from you. The first time I went to go kiss Elizabeth here... <laughs> let me paint you a picture. We were in a parking structure. And we were at her car because we had just finished our, what, second date? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our second date. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Because the first date, we were like, eh, not really sure what this is. Uh, yeah, we you didn't, know. it wasn't until I got Kinda. a text message that said, by the way, you're a cutie, that I was like, green lights, this is, so, this is a by the second date, <laughs> by the second date, you were, you were primed, you were like, oh, this is so romantic. So then well, like, because you were trying to be romantic the whole day too, like, because you were trying, because like, we had walked around I know downtown. <laughs> And uh, we were going at bookstores, so like you were like reading a book and like trying to like wrap your yeah. arm around me get and kind close. of like get close, and just like rub and, my like, hand rub down my your hand. shoulders yeah. a little, and hold and then my hand, just like grab that cheek a little, you yeah. know, and then just like little things. and then like even like the way that you talk to me, you would be, you were kind of like, oh yeah. Hmm. You, you know, you would put on like those like you, gotta shoot you would the take looks. longer to like talk. You would take you would be a little bit more suave. Yeah. And so you well, were yeah. trying to really pull me in. And you I know deep in your voice a little. I know I was yeah, you were doing that too. I know I was being like, well, I don't know, he he he. Like, I don't know what I was being like to you. You were being a little like kind of giddy, a little. You were very I could tell you were very excited. Yeah, yeah. I was. Yeah. You were very nervous in ways too. Yes, like, I was. I was I could sense it. Like I was touching you and I, I felt yeah. like I was very much just like calm and cool and collected. And the whole time I felt like you were just like a ball of nerves, just like looking at all these things that you weren't sure what you were looking at. You're just like pulling things off the like, shelf. What's just this? Like, oh, this is interesting. And I'm like, Yeah, baby. It's so interesting. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, Oh, what's this? <laughs> so anyway. After we're all done, we get to oh her car, God. and we're obviously I held his. Hand. We're yeah, we're just like, I like holding one. Another. Yeah, we just like hold on one another, and I'm about to go in for that kiss, and she just busts out laughing, like belly laughing, man, just like yeah, like right now, like what she's oh doing, but even God. more. Yeah, but then it was like uncontrollable. Yeah. It was like. It was I like you were on shrooms stop. and you couldn't stop yourself from the laughs and the giggles. Yeah, because I laughed for a good like 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, you were crying. And yeah, it was like really bad. And I like even I like in the moment was like, what the fuck, Liz? Like, yeah, what, is, what, happening, is, what Liz? is happening? I remember <laughs> telling you, I remember telling you like, am I like ever going to be able to kiss you? Yeah, you am I ever did going to be say able to that. Kiss like, you? I'm never going to be able to kiss you. I don't you. think am I'm I? ever going to be able to kiss you. <laughs> 
And it was a serious moment in my mind where I was like, I feel Am like I that's what kiss her? this is like, it was like those shroom thing, you know, when you like, you convince yourself you'll never be able to do something ever again. Yeah. And you freak out because you're like, I will never be able to sleep ever again. I'll never be able to drink ever again. I'll never be able to eat ever again. Yeah. 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 I remember that. It's just Not like, good. yeah. When Not you go good. through that and you're like, I can't do this. I'm done with everything. <laughs> and then we probably made it on to some kind of social media feed somewhere because. Well, yeah. Cause we went from being laughing, giddy and like not being able to do it to like hardcore makeout session. Like, yeah. Arrgh. <laughs> Arrgh, me, me, yeah. It yes. was. It, it was actually quite romantic though and I honestly like and the one thing that was really great was like just how it flowed and it just went like even though it was really silly it did fl have a nice flow to it well I you know like I said no so just saying I also thought so at the time when we first met too we lived an hour a little more than an hour and apart from one another so I thought it was very romantic those of both days. of us to to make those drives out. There was a time where I drove all the way up from Grand Rapids after like a long day of working to spend the weekend with you. Yeah, while you were I at had a Comic -Con, Comic Con in Grand Rapids and you I drove that was all the way out there. Me. Yeah, I was very <laughs> impressed. Um, well, especially because it was during like a snowstorm too, so I was yeah, it very felt kind like of worried I was going too. Through you know? light speed and uh, um, Star Wars, but uh, that's how snowy it was. Yeah, I that was a a pretty cool experience for me because you know I have been through a lot of different romantic relationships, and you were the first person that wanted to celebrate the person that I was by you know coming to a comic con and like helping me sell stuff and like. You wore your Marvel Comics like skirt. It was my Star Wars. Was it Star Wars? I thought yeah, it was Marvel. Star Wars. Was no, Star Wars? it was Star Wars. Are you sure? I'm positive. I've never owned a Marvel. I'm sure. Though. I've never owned a Marvel. I skirt. thought it was comic booky though. No, it, yeah, but it was a Star Wars comic booky skirt. Oh, it was Star Wars. Okay, all right. Star well, Wars. Star Wars comic books, but anyway, still comic books. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that was really dope because I've had many pre people in my life before that I've invited to come be uh, at the Comic-Con with me and they've either said they would come and didn't or just flat out said nope not my thing you know yeah which hey I mean if it's not your thing it's not your thing I get it but it's just it but it's nice. nice to have support especially yeah. when you're wanting it you right. know especially like those kind of uh, events because you're there all day and sometimes it's nice yeah, that's to grueling. have another especially person. for a whole weekend right Especially when you're there by yourself. And, like, yeah. that was part of the reason why I really wanted to come was because I there was a part of me that remembered what it was like to bend at those places and to, like, be by yourself and to be like, I have to go to the bathroom. Yeah. And, like, I'm so worried about leaving. Or right. I have to, like, go get food. Or I need to, the like, take a the break. Worst. The food is like, the worst because you're gone for a while. Yeah. You know? So it's always good to have somebody there with you to, like, you know, be like, hey, I got this for you right now, or right. I'll hold the fort down, or I'll watch your stuff, or right. whatever. Well, I mean, I, uh... So that was part of the reason why. I also, like, I just, like, remembered what it was like for me, and I wanted to, to show up there and be there for you of right. support. Well, and it's also how, it, I, and I think like it, it really deepens deep the relationship, yeah, yeah it deepens the relationship because you bond on a different level. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, as the person, like, I felt like bringing you into that world a little bit, you know, like I thought that was a fun experience yeah. for me, you know. Um, so you get to share your life with the other person. It's it's not, to me, it's not about like romantic relationships and long, long lasting romantic relationships like marriage um, are about being supportive of the other person and each other simultaneously. And to me, it's like, uh, it's almost a similar practice to being supportive of yourself and the collective simultaneously. Yes. So just wanted to say that because I was thinking about, thinking about that thought. I love it. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> I think romantic more. relationships too are also to kind of, because we're getting near the end. One important oh, part wow. of the romantic relationships is really being there for one another during times of uh, frustration, right. anger, loss, change. Um, 
you know, it's like there are times where I get really annoyed with you or really upset with you. And I know it's the same, the other, you know, vice versa. And I feel like that is a normal part of being in a romantic relationship. But I think what helps get you through that is, you know, understanding what you need in those moments, processing those emotions and feelings, but then also being open to talk about the hard things, the things that you don't want to talk about. It's that, it's that going back to what you were saying before. Being vulnerable. Being vulnerable. Yes, yeah. like re romantic relationships are essentially, you know, someone, someone can look and say it's a risk because you don't know what's going to happen mm, because it yeah. requires a lot of it's vulnerability. Really. It, re it requires a lot of trust and um also accountability too like also being like romantic relationships <gasps> it's important for you to be accountable for your actions and your words within that relationship especially if you do something like if you like do something like you shouldn't have or said something you shouldn't have and you you know didn't know or you did know better and yep. you know it's up to you to have that awareness and to be responsible for right. your part of it as well as the other part, and there's times where one person will be more of the head than the other. You know, it may never be like a 50-50 thing. It might be like a 60-40 or 70-30, but it always, I think, interchanges and goes back. Or and I think... Five, five. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to think of like the most ridiculous, like... Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. So, yeah, that was pretty much it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any last minute things you'd like to say about romantic relationships? Um, I think for me, I feel I've, like I need a nap after this. I know, man. <laughs> well, I've been up for a while, and oh, uh, man. we did a wake and bake not too long ago, and so the smoking is <coughs> accumulating. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, um, I can say for a long time, I've always wanted to be in. an a romantic relationship I you know the traditional archetype for the man in our culture the American culture at the very least uh, but many I think cultures around the world mm -hmm. um, is that <clears throat> men should strive to uh, be with as many women as possible right uh, to not really want to be tied down to a marriage <clears throat> sort of like the traditional male archetype there's one um, that's like find a husband right and have kids now that is reflective of i would say our reproductive urges right mm -hmm. the man has this urge to plant his seed in as many you know wombs as he possibly can for reproduction's sake you know and the women are constantly wanting to start a family by you know attracting well, a man and you know not constantly becoming... wanting some women don't want to have a family right but i, I guess what i'm saying is like the traditional archetypes yeah right yeah. because then there's the non-traditional archetype like me who isn't as interested in being with as many women as possible i feel you know the the urge the male gaze if you will right but at the same time, like ever since I was a little kid, I've always wanted to be in a romantic relationship. I've always wanted to be a dad. I've always wanted to be a part of a family unit. Mm -hmm. And I've always seen the benefit of having someone in your life to share it with. And um, every time I can remember being with someone like that, I mean, that type of experience to me holds, you know, or I would say being single holds really no candle to being with somebody in a loving, romantic, 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 <laughs> uh, supportive relationship, you know? Yeah. Uh, there's a, a wildly different energy about it that's very loving and fulfilling and satisfying, I would say. And it, it drives you to be more of yourself if it's done right. And it drives you to be more not yourself, to explore more, to, to see the possibilities of life that you wouldn't <clears throat> have necessarily done hadn't you met that person. Right. Um, so in my mind, I think I've always been looking for you in, in a sense. Um, and I'm so glad that I found you finally. And I can say that there are a lot of things about the traditional archetypes of a relationship that I see and have experienced. But then there are <laughs> things that I have definitely desired to change, break the cycle and do things a little differently right 
uh, I know for a fact that when you and I get into arguments or you know misunderstandings, um, it's oftentimes just a matter of expectation and communication. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. like if you can just sort of like calm yourself yeah, down for a minute yeah. and just like talk about, okay, well, this is what I expected. This mm -hmm. is what I tried to communicate but wasn't heard or I at least maybe I thought <clears throat> I communicated it the right way but I didn't. Yeah. And, you know, if you and can talk that to, out. Like meant by it, not, right. not this. Like, right, right, right. And take your ego out of it and yeah. just talk about it like that. Talk about it as is then usually you can just stop and be like, all right, well, I love you. I love you. All right, we're done. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. That's how it should be mm -hmm. in my mind. Mm -hmm. Now, some people like the drama. Yeah. Desperate yeah. Housewives. So. <clears throat> yeah, no, fuck that. Fuck you! Yeah. Fuck you! Yeah, no, no, no. Like, no. I just, no. That, what that's kind of just energy like, is that? It's you know? so toxic. It's so not good. It's so not, like, healthy and, like, no, just no. Yeah. Anyways. Anyway, yes. <laughs> we are approaching the hour mark now. Yeah, look at that. Okay, now bye. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so this was a great episode. So thank you so much for listening to Romantic Relationships episode five of season five. Wow. I thought it was four. Wait, is it? I think it was four. Oh, snap. Pretty sure it's four. It's four. Okay. I'm getting ahead of myself. You are. Thank you for listening to episode four of season five. Mm. Next week, we'll be doing season five or episode five. <laughs> we will be doing season five. Yeah, we and still will And for the foreseeable doing, future. Yes, we will. For We'll just be doing season five for forever. Mm, probably not. And ever. A couple more episodes. Yeah. We'll That's see. what I think. For the rest of the year. Pretty sure. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't know. I'm not going to ask the Oh my God. It is witch season after all. Man. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we're going to uh, have a Halloween episode coming up. We got to. Yeah. yeah, we'll have to think about that. Okay, so thank you so much <laughs> for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like uh, button down below so you can help us grow and spread the love and magic. If you're listening on our podcast, thank you so, so much. We love you all. And. We appreciate you. Make sure you subscribe. Yeah, seriously, we've been watching the the listens and we've been growing over time um, quite significantly, I would say, for the short amount of time that we've been yeah. doing this. So yeah. thank you all so much. It really does mean a lot to us. So if you aren't already following us on Instagram, please do so. You can visit our website, higher consciousness dash talk.com and you can get all the links to our social media and we just um, redid it yeah and plus it looks gorgeous totally new website yeah thanks to brand new baby. refresh you did all that so shout did out to dave week. for that uh so yeah you have to check it out now because it's all updated and new and whatnot but follow Sexy. our instagram and our season of love because <laughs> on thursdays we do a wake and bake at 12 p.m live and then we do a make and bake at 12 p.m. on Fridays. We ain't making love this week. We ain't making love any week. Because that's all we do here on the show. But we're making other things. <laughs> like on crafts. the show specifically is what he said. Yeah, we're that's making right. crafts. Yeah, we ain't making love on the show. Yeah. No. I, doing no. It. I want to get anybody's hopes up. <laughs> People out there are like, ooh, they go, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, uh -huh, I, I don't know. Baby, baby. <laughs> no, we ain't doing that. No, that. no love making on the show that is strictly prohibited. On the Higher Consciousness OnlyFans site. <laughs> the Higher Consciousness OnlyFans site. No, we ain't doing that. Wow. We ain't doing that. <clears throat> Although my, my wheels are turning now. I know, there's a part of me that's like, no, I'm just mm. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. Yes, anyway. All thank right, you guys. so much for listening and watching. We love you all, and we'll see you next week. Bye bye. Bye. Button. Listen to more Higher Consciousness every Thursday on Spotify at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.